as we start today, um, I start with this question. And in fact, when I start all of my presentations on the college level, I ask this question. So consider this. What would you do if you knew that you could not fail? Just think about that for a second. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? Now, I start all of my presentations at the college level that way, or at least I used to, because here's what I figured out. That's a stupid question. Here's a better question. What would you do if you knew that you were going to fail time and time and time again? But whether it was the next day, the next week, the next month, or the next year, you were going to get back up and you were going to try it again because you couldn't not. I'm sorry, is there any English majors in here? Did I say that correctly? But you could not, right? What, what, what is it that you would try if you knew that you were going to fail, go through the torture, go through the agony, go through the failure, go through the obstacles, face the challenges, get kicked in the teeth, punched in the gut, kicked in the shin, but at the end of the day, you were coming back and you were going to do it again. What would you try if you knew you were going to fail, but you continue to get back up? Because here's the reality of the situation. As an entrepreneur, I wish I would have learned this uh, lesson a whole lot earlier in my life. In fact, when I was sitting where you were, because the fact of the matter is we're going to fail time and time and time again. People are going to say no. Opportunities that we were looking forward to are going to fall through. People are going to break our hearts. People are going to not believe what we're telling them. And it's going to cause us to question and doubt. And when those times happen, what is it going to be that's going to compel you? So today I want to focus on writing your own ticket, whatever that looks like to you. As I, as I put up here, write your own ticket, your dreams, your terms. And I'm not here to tell you or suggest to you what your dreams might be, but I'm here to invite you to figure out what they are. And that could be dreams that you have for your time here in college. That could be for your professional life. That could be for your personal life. Or it can be for anything that you want to accomplish in your life. Because what we're going to talk about today is going to apply to everything. And I'm going to give you a roadmap, a playbook, a plan of attack. And when we leave here today, in our short 45 minutes together... We got time. Good. Look at my magical timer there. You'll have that playbook, that roadmap, and that game plan. And if you want to continue to dig a little bit deeper into your own dreams, your goals, and your vision, I have a gift for you that I'll share at the end of our presentation. But a little bit of background on me so you'll know why I'm here and why uh, Ben Posey brought me here to share with you guys today. By the way, I always like to say thank you. I'm very honored uh, that Ben brought me in here today. Let's give a hand to Ben, if you will. I appreciate that. Thank you. But a little bit of background about me. Not to say, oh, look at me, look at what I've accomplished, look who I am, but to say, here's some of the things that I had to go through and the failures that I faced. And I want you to look at your own life and think over the failures you've been through or some of the challenges you see on the horizon for your life and just kind of put yourself in that picture. And in, in doing this, to give you that roadmap that I promised, that, that guide, that plan, we're really going to focus on three things. And it's really three phases that any vision, any goal, or any dream go through. And I, I'll jot them up here on the board so they'll be our focus of attention. Any goal, any vision that you have for your life, that anybody has for their life, you can look at the Steve Jobs of the world, um, you can look at the Bill Gates of the world, you can look at the Mother Teresa's of the world, and you'll see the same pattern existed. It first started with a dream. And get ready because I'm going to invite you to challenge yourself and ask yourself, what is my dream? And depending on our age group, you know, some of us still believe in the beauty of our dreams. Some of us had put that aside long ago. I did it myself and I had to pull it back out, take it off of the shelf and be able to bring it forth. But I'm going to challenge you to look at your dreams and consider what they are. And if you're not really sure, this is your opportunity to dig deeper. The second thing that every vision, goal or dream goes through and I alluded to it, to it earlier, is the struggle. It's the reason I ask you the question in the beginning, what would you try if you knew you were going to fail time and time again, but you were going to get back up and you were going to go for it? And then finally, the third phase that every vision, goal, or dream goes through, first there's the dream, then there's the struggle, and hopefully, if you don't quit and you don't give up, the victory. So imagine that you're sitting 
in a room similar to this one, only it was flat. It didn't go up, right? It was flat. And imagine you're sitting amongst 50, give or take, complete strangers, all your age group. You're back in high school. Put yourself back there. And you're sitting in a room like this, and there's someone like me up on stage, speaking into your life and saying, here's what is possible in your life. Here's what you can do. Here's the difference you can make. Here's the value you can add to the world. And here's how you can change your world, the world, but at least the people and influence the people. And imagine that the, the, the person's up there saying these things and, and, and it's starting to affirm the things that your parents have taught you throughout your year. I don't know about you guys, but I grew up in a very encouraging family. And, and maybe you can finish this statement for me. That my, my parents and my friends and my family would always say, you can do anything in life you want to do as long as you work hard. Work hard? I, anybody else? Imagine it. Imagine it? Well, in my family, it was you can do anything you want to do as long as you put your mind to it. So uh, let me ask you this and test the audience real quick. Raise your hands if you truly believe that you can do anything in life you want to do as long as you put your mind to it. I see some hesitation there. <laughs> All right, well, let's back up here for a second. Because here's, here's the truth of that statement. Well, let's test this for a second. How many of you have seen an episode of American Idol? Now, I'm not talking about the finale. I'm not, I'm not talking about the last two episodes where you have the top three people and they're competing and they're just amazing and it just blows your mind and you're, oh my goodness. No, no, no. I'm talking about the first episode, the second episode, the third episode, the fourth episode, right up until they get up to Hollywood. Painful. I mean, we turn it on for entertainment, but I don't know about you, but I cringe. I have my degree in music. And so to listen to that kind of noise just absolutely drives me crazy. But maybe you have a stronger stomach than I do. But you've seen it. So let me test the notion again. By a show of hands, how many of you believe you can do anything in life you want to do? As long as you put your mind to it. They're holding, they're holding on. They're, they're, they're strong. Here's a better way of looking at that so you can take the pressure off yourself and everything that we're going to talk about right here to put you in the space where you can achieve the things that mean the most to you. You see, you can achieve anything you want to achieve in life as long as you have three things. And I'll say them out to you right. Everybody say talent. Everybody say will. Everybody say desire. Okay. So if you have the talent, if you have the will, and you have the desire, there's a good chance that you can make it. But it all starts with the dream, the goal, the vision. And some people, when you say dream, it's like, ah, that's hokey. Come on, Dwayne, we're all grown up here. Dreams? Really? Yeah, dreams. Where do they come from? Check this out. Think back over your life from this moment in time all the way back throughout your life. What have been some of the defining moments that have shaped the way you think, who you are, the direction you're going, or even the destiny you have for yourself? Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's an event. Sometimes it's full of happiness and joy and excitement. Sometimes it's full of tragedy, tragedy, sadness, and mourning. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's just an experience. So think back over your life and ask yourself, what has shaped and pointed me in the direction that I most wanted to go? You see, when I was sitting in the auditorium, like I asked you to imagine, around 50 strangers, there was a man up on stage. His name was Dr. Tim Lautzenheiser, still well known today in the marching band space uh, as, a, as a major uh, icon in the leadership uh, area. And he influenced me. In fact, he influenced me so much that I went for a summer, and this was back in the day when Dr. Tim would spend three days at a camp taking 50 strangers who barely knew each other by the end of the week, boo-hoo crying because they didn't want to leave each other because they were best friends. And it was that experience, it was that moment, it was that individual, it was that person, it was how he spoke into my life that completely shaped my direction, my destiny. Because as you heard in my intro, I've known what I wanted to do since I was 15 years old, but I didn't have the confidence, the strength, or the belief that I could. And honestly, back then, I mean, all the way up into college, the internet had not been admitted yet, right? So you couldn't just Google stuff. You couldn't just readily find a mentor. You have to go search it out. Maybe you went through this too. About this time, 
you know, I'm sitting in this audience and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. But my parents, because I'm 15 years old, right? My parents are sitting here telling me, and you probably went through this too, they're saying, Dwayne, you've got to find a job or some way to make a living. Now, we're going to send you off to college, but, but you have to do something that's viable, something that you can make a living doing, so you better find something to fall back on. How many of you, since you've been in college, have heard some form of that statement. Hey, you getting a music, music degree? You better find something to fall back on. Anybody? Yeah. All right. Good, good, good. I hate that. How many of you hate that? <laughs> right? And here's the sad thing. And here's the, here was the indicator that I should have paid attention to. My music teachers were telling me the same thing. You better find something. But, right? <laughs> right? But, but, so, so, but, but I want you all to know when I went to college, I, 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 uh, I didn't necessarily want to go, but I figured if I'm going to do something, or if I'm going to go to college, I'm going to do something that... Um, I enjoy, that I love, and up until that point in my life, it was music. But I want you to know I was very ambitious in college. Uh, I got in there and uh, I, I focused because I was able to cram four years of college into six. Nice. Anybody else on that plan? <laughs> don't, don't point, don't it's point at each other. Yeah, yeah, it's too expensive. Yeah, back, back in the day, it wasn't that expensive. So, so, so here I was in college. I knew what I wanted to do. And in that moment with Dr. Tim, I said, now wait a minute, if my parents are telling me that I have to get a job and make a living and do something viable. I said, I don't, I don't know if I can do what that dude does, but here's, a, here's the reality of the situation. This dude gets paid to run his mouth and draw pictures. I'm like, I get in trouble in class for that. I'm pretty sure I can handle that notion, right? But I didn't know if it was a viable opportunity. Again, I was in college, well, I was in high school. At that point, I didn't, I didn't know what the world was about. So I took that dream. I put it up on the shelf and I swore one day that I'd get back to it. So if you're hearing somebody tell you, find something to fall back on and you hate it as much as I did, let me give you a phrase that will rewind, scratch that record and give you something positive because you should never, I don't care what it is you do, never, ever find something to fall back on. Because if you find something to fall back on, it's just saying, I quit, I give up, I can't do this. Rather, here's a phrase that you can take with you and if you're taking notes, feel free to write it down. Find something that's going to help you fund the path to your dreams. I'll write that up here for you. Find something that's going to help you fund the path to your dreams. Now, I was talking about defining moments earlier. I go all the way back to when I'm seven, eight years old. My mother put me in an art class. One of her best friends was a professional artist. And uh, she put me in that class. I showed a lot of visual art talent and promise. So it was a defining moment in my life. It showed me a talent that I had. But I had no desire. And I definitely had no will to pursue that. But it was a talent that was identified here. Second defining moment in my life. And again, this is not about me. This is about you would have been your defining moments. I'm just showing you my path. Hopefully it will jog in your mind what your path has been. Second defining moment, 11 years old, I pick up a saxophone for the first time. Now you got to understand that, that, that before that happened, I was, I, I, I'd been in uh, elementary school. And my music teacher would come around. They used to carry these carts around, right? And they had records on them. Anybody know what a record is around? Hey, good, good. History books, right? Um, so, so, so it had records on it. And she'd come around and she played this one song. It was called Run, Run, Run. And it was the first time I was exposed to a saxophone player. And I was excited. Well, back in the day, if we wanted to watch music videos, and back then in the 19... Mm, um, yeah, they, you, you couldn't just turn YouTube on. <laughs> you couldn't just turn YouTube on and go and click and, you know, watch whatever you wanted to watch. You had to wait a full week until Friday night or Saturday night, and there was this show called Night Tracks. You, you remember that? Um, yeah. So, it, it, and so, but it seemed like every band back then had a saxophone player, you know? And, and, and it, part of the vision, part of the goal, part of the dream, part of your defining moments is not what you see or hear or experience necessarily, it's what you put into it as you put yourself into it. And I can tell you right now that whenever I saw those saxophone players on TV, I wasn't watching saxophone players, that was me. I wanted to look cool. I wanted to look good. I wanted to play the saxophone. And for the longest time, I just walked around the house making crazy sounds on my saxophone. 
And I'd, I'd walk around the house and I'd squeak and I'd, and, and I'd just make horrible sounds. And my, you know, my mom's like, oh, bless his heart, right? Just like you know, a mother can love, right? And one day, it was funny, uh, I, think it was in, I think it was in my first year of high school. We had just transplanted into another high school. My parents left. You know, they felt like they could trust me and so they left. And so I'm at home and uh, another part of being in high school was that not only playing in the band, you know, I, I don't know about around here, but uh, to, to play in the band in junior high and high school is like killing your social contract. <laughs> Right, and so I, in, 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 in order to survive in that and still have a social life, I felt like I needed to work out, right? Because you had all these athletes. I was a musician, so I started lifting, you know. And I started getting weights, and I was, you know. So one day, my parents left me. They felt like they could trust me. I was doing a little bit of practicing, but then I said, you know, let me let me uh, go take a shower, get showered up, whatever the case might be. And so I come out, uh, and I'm sitting in front of my mirror, and I'm drying off, toweling off, and stuff like that. And then I start looking in the mirror because I've been working out, right? I start looking in my mirror, and I started going. And then right, right about that moment, I, I looked in the mirror and I went, Ugh! and I look over and it's my mom. <laughs> they had come home. Well, that goes over well. That goes over better in Mississippi. But the point being is, is that I felt like I needed to work out, and I was practicing and playing. So saxophone was the second defining moment in my life. I saw the saxophone. Somebody offered me that opportunity. And next thing you know, I was playing the saxophone, never put it down since. In fact, I went, to, I went through junior high school, I went through high school, and I went all the way through college to get a music performance degree. Now, does anybody know what you do with a degree in music performance? <laughs> that's right, move back home with mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did, way too long. Uh, but that was a defining moment in my life. But here was the thing, I was in college, I had this vision for my life, just like you have a vision for your life. And I didn't know how I was going to make it happen. And here was the end of college coming up. I'm like, oh my goodness, I've got to do something. So I'm starting to flip channels late at night. And I see this infomercial, this guy telling me that I can make a million bucks placing tiny classified ads. <sighs> Why not? I'm getting a music performance degree. This might work. You see what I'm saying? And so I started trying it. And I made a little money. And I, and I lost a little money. But the entrepreneurial spirit was born in me. But again, didn't really have the desire. Certainly to have the will. Had a little bit of the talent. Just like I did in music. Music, I had the talent, I had the desire, but I didn't have the will to sit in the practice room for hours on end and play. Anybody feel me on that? Yeah, it's just, it was painful for me. So I knew that this wasn't something in and of itself that I was going to be able to do. But the entrepreneurial spirit was born in me. So watch this. And, I, and I'm inviting you to check your defining moments in life because in writing your own ticket, Many times it's not just one solid single focus. It might come to together for you like it did for me. You see, because I had a visual talent for doing art, but there was no will or desire there. I played the saxophone, it, saxophone. it was what I loved, it was my life, it was my existence, but I didn't want to commit to that process. Dr. Tim just completely blew my mind with the way that he did what he did, and that was really calling to me, and then I had the entrepreneurial spirit. Here's where it all came together for me. One day I'm sitting with my wife. Uh, we're at Disney World. We're huge Disney fans. Any Disney fans in here? Oh gosh, I love Disney World. We're going back in May. Mm. Um, so no, no, I, I'm gonna edit that out of the cameras. Um, so, so, so we were sitting at uh, Disney World, and I'm just frustrated because I've got this vision, this goal, and this dream. You may be sitting here today, and you may have a vision, a goal, or a dream. People have told you to find something to fall back on. Now you know it's fun the path to your dream, but you're still not seeing a way that you're going to make it happen. I'm gonna give you that roadmap here in a little bit, and that was me. I didn't know how to take the dream and make it a reality and I'm sitting there frustrated and I tell my wife honey I am 32 years old and I'm not getting any closer to my dreams I had a dream at 15 I put it on the shelf and I swore I'd come back but I hadn't I said honey I'm not getting any closer and I feel compelled to go and speak into the lives of the people the way Dr. Tim spoke into my life to change to help to serve I said but I just don't know how to make it happen and we were having a conversation, and all of a sudden, that epiphany happened. I said, whoa, 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 stop. I have a visual talent that could serve me in building websites, in creating marketing design, and doing all of those things. I've got a talent for playing music, and I love to speak. What if I brought those two together? I could be somebody that would be easily recognizable because nobody else is out there playing the saxophone and speaking. She said, yeah, you know what? And remember that entrepreneurial spirit? She says, if you do it enough, it becomes a business. 
it all came together. Everything that was a defining moment in my life all of a sudden merged. And I don't know what it is for you. I don't know if it's one single thing that you're going to pursue. But here's what I believe, and here's why I shared this with you, and here's why I invite you to check your own defining moments. Because I believe our past is telling us about our future. And if we'll simply look at the clues that life has laid down for us, and we'll look into the future to see how we can use those and bring those together, we can serve the world in a greater way than we can ever imagine. In fact, it looks something like this. If you truly want to write your own ticket, you know, I talk to this, I, I share this message with high school students, I share it with college students, and I share it with adults, and the, and, the, and the higher up in the age group I get, the more skeptical the people become. And I'll have adults tell me, Dwayne, write your own ticket, that's not possible. There's too many things going on in this world that prohibit you and stop you from living your dreams, from achieving your goals. You have to get a job, you have to uh, answer to somebody else, there's obstacles, you can't just do your thing. And that's what stopped me from 15 years old to 33 years old. And I'm here to invite you wherever you are in life right now. If you put your dream up on the shelf and you've put it there saying that's not possible, pull it back down because I'm about to show you how it is. Because when these things converge, I'm going to show you this right here, which was my attempt at drawing a Venn diagram. How many of you remember Venn diagrams from math? It's the only thing I remember from math. Oh, gosh, I was horrible at math, right? Uh, that's why four years of college and six, by the way. But check this out. So no matter what you choose to do, whether that's music, whether you get a degree in medicine, whether you go in a different direction, whether you get a job, whether you have a, a vision of starting a nonprofit or some other organization or, or starting a family or having a successful relationship, it all comes down to this. Out there, if you will add value to a market, whether that's the market in a business sense, whether that's an audience, whether that's a group of people, whether that's the relationship that you're in, if you will consistently add value to some sort of market with your passion, backed by talent, that's where it's possible to bring it all together, to write your own ticket. What did I start doing? I started going out there and I started speaking to audiences. I didn't know if I could. I knew Dr. Tim could. I knew I, I, I liked what he did, but I didn't know on a real level if I could. So what did I do? I went out there and I started testing. And, and guys, I failed miserably. What are you going to do? What would you do if you knew you were going to fail time and time again, but you're going to get up and you're going to do it again? I'd like to say I went out there, I tried, I failed, I got right back up and I kept going, but I didn't. I went to a conference. This is my first attempt. At speaking in front of the college audience, I went to a conference where I could showcase for 15 minutes. And there was another session where I did about 45 minutes, an hour session. Went in there, killed it. It was just absolutely mind blowing. I was on a cloud. Went into this 15 minute session where it really mattered. Fell flat on my face. I'd like to say I went the next quarter or the next year right back to that conference. I did not. I hid and licked my wounds for a year. What should I have done? What should you do? Get back up. Go after it. We've been told it time and time again. If you fall off a horse, get back on. Did I know? I felt sorry for myself. Many times we're going to get kicked in the teeth. Many times we're going to get punched in the gut. Many times life is going to let us down. And we have a choice to make right there. What are you going to do to get back up? And here's where this becomes important. Because in order to write your own ticket, you got to understand, as we mentioned before, there's going to be a struggle. But how do you go from struggle to full victory, no matter what area of life you're trying to accomplish in? Here's how it happens. To go and overcome struggle and victory, when you're experiencing failure, the first thing you need to realize, failure is not failure at all. Tell you a story about Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx. On the very first day that FedEx tried to do or tried to ship packages, I think they tried to, uh, to, to ship somewhere north of a thousand packages. At the end of their first day, they had only successfully shipped two. The people were freaking out. Oh my gosh, time to all stuff the resume. Fred's going to start 
Heads are going to start to roll. We're going to lose our jobs. And then everybody started freaking out. And Fred pulled them all together. He said, no, no, no. Wait, guys. It's cool. Here's what just happened. We just figured out how to successfully deliver two packages. Tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, we're going to figure out how to do that again and again and again until we get the model that we're looking for. See, Fred Smith didn't see failure. He saw feedback. One of my favorite mentors, Dr. John Maxwell, says it this way. He wrote a book about it. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you learn. And Fred Smith understood that, that we could not succeed in anything in life unless we fail. But here's the thing. In our society, in our education system, where we're so many times we don't want to fail the test, so we get shy about failing at anything else. We go through our whole lives not wanting to get an F, not wanting to get a D, and I'm not here to encourage you to get either one of those. Uh, in fact, here's, here's a funny story. Um, I, was, I was a pretty decent student in college, and I only really got one F. Can anybody guess what subject that was in? Was it math? Band. Music major. F in band. How? Didn't show up. Got a little arrogant. Um, but that was failure, right? And so we've been conditioned not to want to fail. We avoid it at all costs, but I'm here to share with you through my own personal experience. You see, because when I started out and waited until 33 years old, it only took me four and a half years to go from where I was to where I truly wanted to be doing this full time, traveling all over the country. But I waited some 15, 16, 17 years to get started. Here's what I'm here to encourage you to get started now. Look at failure as nothing more than feedback. And here, over time, is how I found out to do it. And I hope this will serve you too. No matter what obstacle you face, no, what, no matter what failure you're faced with or results that you're faced with, take three things into consideration.
In negotiations, I teach negotiations at the corporate level, and we, and we talk through this time and time again, as why, as what, as how, but then I came to realize that in my own goal, in my own dream, in my own aspirations, this was serving me as well, because it told me that failure was never failure if I would simply do this. I want to hold fast to why. I don't want to let go of that. I want to get clear on it. I want to hone it down and get it as crystal clear as I can possibly get it, because whenever times get tough, it's the thing that's going to fail me. I need to understand going into it what I'm willing to give, what I'm willing to ask for, what I'm willing to sacrifice, and so will you. So my question to you is, what is it that you're willing to give? What is it that you're willing to ask for? What is it that you're willing to sacrifice? And here's the magic. Let go of how. I think the thing that was precluding me, and I think the thing that robs us all of the things we truly want and truly desire in our lives, is we get so rigid and so focused how we see it. You know, the, 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 the non-negotiable for me in this particular space in my dream is that I don't know how it's going to look, but I've got to speak into the lives of people because I was given a gift by someone else who helped me to believe the power and beauty of my dreams. And I felt compelled. And I knew I could get kicked in the teeth time and time and time and time again. If I was kicked in the teeth time and time and time again for music, you could have it. If I was kicked in the teeth time and time again for art, you can have it. If I was punched in the gut for entrepreneurship, take it. I don't want it. But this was not negotiable. Being able to speak into the lives of people and help them to see the potential in their lives whenever I doubted myself was the greatest gift that I could give anybody. But I didn't know how it was going to work out. I went to that conference, the college conference, and it didn't work out. Ultimately, I ended up getting some gigs not having to go to that conference, and it worked out just great. It just took time. I needed to get back on the horse. Then I went and stood in front of college, uh, high school audiences, and that went very well, too. And then corporate audiences, and that went well, too. I just had to keep going. I had to see the failure as feedback. What are some of the obstacles that are challenging you? What are you trying to accomplish, and you see it one way, and it's eluding you? The more you grab for it, the more it runs away. Let go of I had to be open to the audiences that wanted to hear what I had to say. I had to be open, open to the opportunities that came to me. And I had to let go of how. If I hadn't let go of how, I wouldn't be in front of you today. Give me an example to bring these all together. When you consider why as being non-negotiable, in other words, this is what I want, and it's not going away from me speaking. What you're willing to give, what you're willing to ask for, and then letting go of how. Because see, if you hold on to how, you may never get what you want. Here's a story to bring it all together. In fact, let's do it this way. Think about your favorite TV show. Now, I'll just be honest right now. My wife tells me not to confess this in public, but I'll just be honest. One of my guilty pleasures is Scandal. How many Scandal fans do we have in here? Yeah. But I also like the Big Bang Theory. I mean, like the Big Bang Theory. All right. Um, and House of Cards. That's pretty, uh, wow. Yeah, so I've got a few of them, right? But whatever your favorite movie is, I want you to think about that for a second. I want you to think about the lead character and maybe a secondary character. And just picture them in your mind for a second. And for some reason, these two characters both find themselves walking into a kitchen. Picture that for a second. One comes in from this direction, one comes in from this direction. When they get there, they came to the kitchen for one purpose. They wanted an orange. But they get there, they find out that in, in the little container, there's only one orange left. So what do they do? They start bickering back and forth about oranges and who's going to get that orange. And all of a sudden, that, that challenge escalates, and finally, the more aggressive one reaches in the cabinet, pulls out a knife, and stabs it. <laughs> That's not what happened. She took the uh, knife, sliced the orange in half, gave it to the other person and said, here. Now, if you could have followed both of these people into their respective directions, here's what you would have found out. The one person, making, let's say, the lead character, walked this way, peeled the orange, threw the rind in the trash, and ate the fruit because she was hungry. While the other person, Walking this way, peeled the orange, threw the fruit in the trash, and held onto the rind because they were baking. What should they have considered? And when you're 
faced with a challenge and you can't get to the goal, vision, or the dream, what should you consider? Number one, come back to why. Many things in life will catch your eye, but only a few things will catch your heart. Pursue those. And if it's not pulling at your heart and refusing to let go, if your past is not telling you about your future, let it go. Or bring it all together in a different way. Number two, what? Have you given enough? Have you sacrificed? Have you given everything you possibly can to make sure it's successful? Have you been willing to give up and let go? Have you been willing to ask for what it is you want? And then finally, are you holding on so fast that you're precluding yourself from even getting it? And the two people in that scenario right there should have considered, why is it that you want the orange? Because if they would have, both of them could have walked away with the complete picture, with a complete portion of what they needed. The same thing happens with writing your own ticket. Take the defining moments in your life. Spend some time with them. I'd like to say that that epiphany I had at Disney World with my wife has happened like that, but it hasn't. I've been asking myself these questions for a good six months before that epiphany came. And here's what I invite you to do. Challenge yourself to continue to dig deeper. And even if you're crystal clear or feel like you know exactly what you want from your life, there are still situations, opportunities, people challenging you that it's not possible. Challenge it, push it into it. And not only it things as failure, but only feedback. And when you will go to a specific marketplace and understand what it is they value and give that value with your talent and your passion, you truly can write your own ticket. But how do you figure out what people value? One of my favorite mentors, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, John Maxwell said it this way. He said, leadership is influence, nothing more nothing less. And that resonated with me. And I had the opportunity to speak with him one time, one on one. I said, Dr. Maxwell, I'm fascinated and intrigued by the statement, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. But can you help me out with something? What is influence? And what does that have to do with what we're talking about here? He said, because Dwayne, influence is when we add value to the lives of other people. But in order to add value to the lives of other people, we must first understand what it is that they value. And once we understand what it is that they value, it's our responsibility and our duty to give them more of what they value. Somebody else pointed, to me, pointed out to me, imagine that you have a gift for your best friend. You know your best friend. You know exactly what they want. You know exactly what they would value. So you take that gift, and it's their birthday. And you want to give it to them on their birthday. But here's what you do with that gift. You take that gift, put it in a nice little package, and you wrap it in Christmas paper, in holiday paper. And you give it to your friend. And they look at you crazy. But they love you, so they're going to forgive. But they're just going to take it, and they're going to put it aside until the appropriate time. Here's the point. They never get the gift that you want to give them because it's wrapped in a way that they can't receive it, the way they can't understand it, or the way that they don't want it. So many people go with their talent and their passion, trying to write their own ticket, and they totally disregard what the market values, what the market looks like. And they beat their head against a wall. Goodness knows I did for way too long. And when we do that, it precludes us from getting the things that we truly desire and want. But if we'll listen more than we talk, and we'll ask more than we try to give, the market, whatever that looks like for you, will tell you exactly what they want. And when they do, just give it to them. Add value to their lives. Let go of how you see it working out. Hold fast to why and be creative with what you're willing to give and take. You truly can write your own ticket. Before I close out, I want to give you a gift. If this has been a valuable message to you, I want to give you a roadmap, a playbook. I wrote a book called Write Your Own Ticket. Your dreams, your terms. And I want to give it to you for free. So I'll write it down for you. If you want to go to it, you can pull out your phone right now if you like. And just go to Write Your Own Ticket Book. I hate when I'm not on slaves here. Write Your Own Ticket Book.com. Don't go to Write Your Own Ticket.com. There's some dude selling something that looks shady. It's not me. It's not me. Write your, write your own ticket um, And if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, where the case might be, or keep in touch, um, at R. Dwayne Huff. R stands for Richard. Uh, R. Dwayne Huff. And uh, on Facebook, at least, Dwayne.
But anyway, um, write your own ticket, book.com is a free book, and, and, and so it's, it's the entire book, you're gonna get it for free, so it's, gosh, I wanna say it's like north of 100 pages, and there's a, there's a dinner coming to it, and whenever that comes out, I'll send it out to you. But also there's some videos that kind of um, bring you through that book and give you a little bit more information. So if that's value, that's my gift to you. Um, and I'll close out by saying this, I know I, I told you a lot about my story. I mean, it wasn't about me. I wanted you to see some of the things that I struggled with and things that I went through and some of the uh, revelations and some of the clues that were given to me. And hopefully you'll be able to look at your own life and see similar things in there. But here's what I will say. It took me way too long to take the first step and then the second step and then the third step. And I don't know what your vision and goal or your dream is today, but I think you have one. And if you don't have clarity, and if you're not crystal clear on what it is you want to accomplish in your life from this day forward, you owe it to yourself before you take another semester, or before you graduate, or before you move into the next phase, to get clear on what it is that you want. Because the world needs what you have. And if you don't give them what you have, they never get it. The world is just a little less fortunate than it would have been had you given it to them. Believe in the beauty of your dreams. Surround yourself with people, listen to things, read things, and associate with people that will lift you up and that will bring you because whenever you are able to take what you have, talent and your passion, and you're able to serve and you're able to give and lead the way, you're going to make the world, you're going to make your world, you're going to make the life around you a much better place, and you're going to be happy you did, and you're going to walk in fulfillment, and you're just going to glow and you're going to be. You know, somebody said one time, you need to find something that people want to pay you to do. And I heard one time that a career is so much, a career should be something that you love so much that you would do it for free, but you do it so well that people will pay you to do it. And we're so focused on the fact, is this going to make a living? Am I going to be able to make a living doing this? I mean, crying out loud and a degree in music performance. And I've done amazing things. I've had great opportunities because I focused and committed to what I was most passionate about. And here's the last thing I'll say. No matter what it is you choose to do with your life, Two things that you always want to invest in, the people around you and the way that you communicate. Because if you do that, you will open the world of opportunity and you truly can write your own ticket. Thank you guys.